Well, hello. I'm Timmy, uh, amateur photographer, fan of the Nikon SLRs, particularly the uh, older flagships. Um, welcome to my very low rent, uh, unrehearsed channel. Um, I thought, given that the Z9 has appeared and has no shutter, um, uh, and being a contrarian and uh, <laughs> loving to uh, uh, oppose the new and uh, big up the old, I thought I would um, do a little piece in praise of shutters. Um, I'm going to link an American guy's video where he has the shutter mechanism removed from a DSLR camera. Um, I think he may have them moving in the wrong direction. Uh, I say that because on my uh, Nikon SLRs, uh, DSLRs, um, when I do a flash sync at above flash speed and I'm not doing HSS, um, my dark bands will start moving up from the bottom, which uh, suggests he has things the opposite way around from my camera. Anyway, here we go. Let's talk about the shutter. Um, it's a very clever thing. Um, you've got a first and a second curtain shutter and um, they are made of three overlapping blades. Um, so they compact down, they expand to their full size to cover the sensor, but they will um, reduce by overlapping the blades as they're stored above and below the sensor. Um, so um, they are very good bits of technology and they move at high speed. They obviously can move across the, the shutter 24mm um, um, uh, distance if you're looking at the shutter in uh, landscape format. Um, so they, they're fast bits of technology. Um, on a lot of cameras, um, some lower of course, the older ones particularly, um, but on a lot of cameras, your flash sync speed is a 250th. Um, oh, are you getting bored with me? Um, let's just put a, uh, there you are, that's my D3S 50mm lens and um, an older SB28 uh, non-digital flash gun. Um, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, ooh. So, oh, and uh, also here is a, a really uh, classic, one of the first sort of um, autofocus um, uh, enabled sort of uh, TTL flash guns for the old film cameras. I think this one came out about when the F401 came out many years ago and 501. Um, so uh, we're talking old stuff here. Um, anyway, yes, back to the shutter. So, you have a first and a second curtain. You've all heard of that. Um, so what happens is the first curtain is in rest position. That is parked covering the sensor uh, on my Nikon anyway. Um, uh, and it kind of extended. And the, um, the second curtain is folded away below the shutter. Um, so what happens is uh, a camera is by default set to first curtain sync. Uh, so normally, uh, so we're talking flash here. Um, so normally you would take an exposure and you would be within the sync speed. So what would happen is the first curtain that's sort of open covering the sensor would withdraw to storage above the sensor and only when it completed the, uh, the journey and the sensor was fully exposed would the second curtain start to follow it and cover the sensor. Um, uh, that's assuming that you're exactly on um, uh, maximum sync speed. Um, obviously, if you're going slower, then you pause before the second curtain starts to move and cover the sensor. Um, so that's sort of how it works, you know, you're, you've got your, you do your exposure by the first curtain withdrawing and compacting and then 
when you've exposed for your uh, correct time, the second curtain follows and it open it comes out from a, from below the sensor and it opens out and covers the sensor again and um, then the whole thing has to reset so the uh, the second curtain uh, I think probably remains there while the first curtain comes down from above and resets itself covering the sensor because you need to have a, a default position with the sensor covered so that's uh, that's all jolly good. So what happens when you get above the sync speed of the camera? Well what happens there is there are physical limitations on the speed the shutter curtains can move across the sensor um, because this is high, high quality engineering but there are limitations to what you can do. Um, so you get faster than 250th on my uh, D3S here or any of my D3X or my D3 or, one, or my D810 hello D810 you're filming me um, uh, if you get faster than 250th what has to happen is that the uh, uh, second curtain has to follow the first curtain before the first curtain has fully reached and exposed the sensor. Um, that's simply because they can't move enough to keep the sensor uh, fast enough to keep the, ex the sensor completely exposed the whole time. So as you rack up the speed the um, second curtain starts its movement to cover the sensor quicker and quicker after the first curtain is started withdrawing. So rather than having a fully exposed sensor you have a sort of slit with the first curtain edge moving to expose the sensor and the leading edge of the second curtain following behind covering up the sensor again so you have this moving slit moving across so that's why when you go faster than your camera sync speed you start to get black bands on your exposure and as you move faster and faster the second curtain starts its journey quicker and quicker um, so there's you know, less uh, so it's following the uh, the first curtain much more closely so you get an even smaller slit between the two and that slit is moving across the camera sensor so that's so that's why you get your black bands and that's why they get bigger and bigger as you go faster and faster so how does HSS work? High speed sync. Well, how that works is the camera's very clever computers take account of the fact that you no longer have a completely exposed shutter and that you have a slit moving upwards across the sensor to expose it. Now, with ambient light coming in all the time, a, a normal shot that's fine you know um, your slit moves it exposes the entirety of the sensor um, but not all at one time it does it, take, does it, uh, it, does it as the, uh, the slit moves across um, with a flash that's not possible because the flash is a very instantaneous burst of maybe a thousandth of a second or faster in the case of speed lights a little bit slower with uh, some studio strobes. Um, so what you're going to get at any one time is only the exposed gap between the two curtains exposed. So the, the, the camera computer says right well what we're going to do is we're going to fire the flash multiple times to cover all the sensor um, and that's what happens your slit moves across the screen across the sensor and your flash fires several times so that every bit of the sensor is exposed by the time the exposure is completed um, and uh, obviously if you do uh, an, uh, an eight thousandth or a very fast shutter speed four thousand eight thousandth whatever uh, you've got a very narrow gap so your flash is going to have to fire lots of times to sync with that 
little gap moving across the sensor. And, and you, you end up with a, an, uh, an image that's actually made up of a mosaic of, um, of, uh, of flash exposures all joined together because you have, at no time have you exposed the whole sensor in one go. Um, so that explains why HSS is difficult to work with and produces you know, low power because you aren't firing one flash anymore. You are firing lots of flashes close together and, um, and uh, in that circumstance you can't produce a big powerful flash like normal and the faster you go on your HSS the, uh, the weaker and more pathetic your, uh, your flash exposure is going to be. Uh, so there you are, that's, a, that's an explanation of, of curtains and things. One final point which um, occurs to me but uh, I've never really heard discussed um, in a very uh, comprehensive way is that as I've explained the the, the slit of the um, the sense of the curtains the curtains can only move across at a maximum speed of the HSS thing so a 250th so if you do an HSS exposure at I'll do the extreme example 8,000th and you have all these individual little um, slits exposed by the flash to give you one complete mosaic flash exposure. My question is, is that really an eight, uh, an eight thousandth? I don't think so. I think you are actually limited to the mechanical uh, maximum speed that the shutter curtains can move. So your eight thousandth ex uh, exposure is you've got an 8,000th flash exposure on the sensor but the whole uh, flash of all the bits is actually a 250th because the slit that the, is generated by the gap between the two curtains cannot move across the sensor faster than the sync speed of the flash. So there you are. There's a thought to think about. Um, <laughs> Do come and um, tell me more and um, explain things if you think I'm talking bollocks. Um, but for now, <laughs> oh no, oh, oh, let's not go quite yet. Let's just talk about these old flashes here. Um, this SB28 and this SB20. Now these are from the film era and they... Um, they can't do proper TTL and um, HSS and that kind of things with the modern DSLRs, but they can work. They can certainly work below the uh, camera sync speed if you put the, um, the camera in uh, manual and um, you can you can use if you switch these to um, TTL, um, which they used to do on film. I think they'll return an error, but you can use them in um, their own auto or in manual with um, a DS, DSLR. So put your camera on a shutter speed of not above two hundred and fiftieth, or depending on your camera. Um, and um, put this and you can even make it work in auto because they have their own here's the one on the SB20 here um, that has a, uh, a little sensor of its own so you could use it on a previous non TTL camera and it would give you an auto exposure and um, by reading from here and not from reading TTL and um, they do work. If you uh, get one of these cheapo SB20s, um, <laughs> I think this one was about 15 quid and it's uh, in quite a nice nick, um, it, will, um, it will fire and work um, and uh, it will work auto and it will work manual. Um, so um, there you are, there's an interesting um, little adjunct, if that's the right word. Uh, yeah. Uh, I 
better uh, I better sign off now. Um, cheerio.